The Knicks are looking to be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And in order for them to do that, they may need to make a trade before the trade deadline in order to upgrade their roster and help solidify them as one of the best teams in the East. And according to Bleacher Report, the Knicks may be looking at three specific trade targets at this moment that they could look to trade for to upgrade their roster. And according to one NBA insider, he actually chooses one player that he believes will help the Knicks upgrade their roster immediately. We're going to break down all of this and so much more today. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. These are the most realistic trade targets for the New York Knicks, at least according to Bleacher Report. Now, as we know, headed into this season, since the Knicks retained Evan Fournier, we all anticipated that the Knicks would likely be a trade deadline suitor for another player. Because we know there is no reason for the Knicks to keep Evan Fournier unless they believe they can help facilitate a trade for another piece that they believe can help this Knicks roster move forward. And at least according to Bleacher Report, they have three specific targets that are likely targets the Knicks could go after this season to help improve their roster. We're going to break down those players and let you know exactly what players Bleacher Report is looking for the New York Knicks to add this season. According to Bleacher Report, the trade market seems like the best place to try to make the leap for the New York Knicks. And they don't need to wait for the unofficial opening on December 15th when most free agents signed this offseason become trade eligible to start identifying targets. So here are some of the targets that Bleacher Report is looking for the New York Knicks to add. OG Ananobi for the Toronto Raptors. According to Bleacher Report, they believe that if the Raptors are ready to reset around Scotty Barnes, then the Knicks should be ready to put a massive offer on the table for OG Ananobi. The 26-year-old is a lockdown defender who seemingly always finds way to improve his offensive output. This season, for instance, he's netting a career high 2.6 triples per game and still connecting on those long-range looks at a healthy 37.1% clip. It's no secret, folks. For me, besides Mikel Bridges in Brooklyn, the next best player that fits this Knicks team is OG Ananobi. It's for a multitude of reasons, but for one main reason, folks. The Knicks need a definite, consistent, dominant, but true wing. And that person is not RJ Barrett. That player does not exist on the Knicks right now. You trade for OG Ananobi, instantly the Knicks have that player. They can move RJ Barrett back to the two, give them some size. They get more size at the three, way more size there than they had before. A true wing, somebody who can defend at a high rate and somebody who will clearly can help you on the offensive side of the ball as well too. He can do both. That's why he would be so important for this Knicks team. He is number one on my list in terms of players that the Knicks should go after right now this season. Because if you look at OG Ananobi right now, Toronto doesn't know what they're going to do with him. They could offer him an extension, but he has a player option. He's CAA, by the way, too. He could walk this offseason for nothing. And if he does that, what is the Toronto Raptors going to do to fill that void? Because they can't add anybody to do the things that OG Ananobi can do in a game. They can't replace his impact. And if he walks for nothing and potentially walks to the New York Knicks this offseason, given the CAA ties, it is going to be a huge improvement for the Knicks and a huge failure for Toronto. So maybe they should look at trying to trade OG. But even if they do, the Knicks are likely not going to be on the table for that because of the impending lawsuit that the Knicks and the Raptors have going on right now. Talk about one of the worst teams to have a lawsuit with right now because the Raptors have the perfect player for the Knicks to add to their roster to immediately make an impact and help this team. But because of this lawsuit, I don't see this trade happening. Though in my opinion, I agree with Bleacher Report, it would be the top trade on my list. I just don't see it happening for the Knicks. So let's move on to the next trade that Bleacher Report believes that the New York Knicks could entertain.
Dorian Finney-Smith Jr. from the Brooklyn Nets. Now, if you don't know about Dorian Finney-Smith, he is a hellacious defender, can play multiple positions. He's a good mid-range shooter, not a great three-point shooter, but he can still attack, he can still penetrate, he's long, he's crafty, and to put it in a nutshell, he's a Tom Thibodeau guy if I had to write it on paper because he gives you everything on both sides of the floor. He doesn't need the ball in his hands to be impactful. He can come off the bench or he can start whatever you need him to do he can do. Another reason why he's a perfect Tom Thibodeau guy. But the reason I'm not going to go into this as heavy as I should is because of one clear reason. Brooklyn Nets. I don't think I've been alive the last time the Nets and the Knicks did business together. I'm going to be 34 soon. They haven't done business in my entire life. Likelihood is they're not going to do business for the rest of my life, for the rest of your life, for the rest of the time these two teams coexist in the NBA. It's just what it is. They don't do business. So he would be a good fit. Great ad. Somebody to look at. He plays for the Nets. Automatically off the table. There's not even a point discussing it. I have no idea why Bleacher Report even added Smith to this list. We know the Knicks would never trade for him. He's a Brooklyn Net. Impossible. Finally, the last person on this list. And if you've watched my channel, you know for me, he's the most realistic in my opinion. And he is that star, checks that box, and creates, if the Knicks were to add him, the most dynamic and explosive scoring backcourt with himself and Jalen Brunson. Donovan Mitchell, according to Bleacher Report, if they are remotely interested in even fielding offers for Mitchell, the Cavaliers in this case, the Knicks would almost certainly make the first call. They have very good scorers, but none on the level of Mitchell, who's averaging a career-high 29.2 points on 48.6, 39.3, and 88.7 shooting splits, folks. That's phenomenal. That's ludicrously crazy, but phenomenal shooting splits. And while there might be some skill overlap between him and Jalen Brunson, the fact that the two have an established relationship could help them work that out. Jalen Brunson told The Athletic in August that Donovan Mitchell is a good friend of his. And while they were in the same high school class, their relationship goes back a long way. Jalen and Donovan used to be friends. We see how Dante and Jalen Brunson play off each other, the way they work together. Technically, Dante plays Jalen's position. So why do they work? Because they know each other's games, they're friends off the court, and they get that chemistry. Well, it seems like Donovan and Jalen Brunson have that same connection. It seems like Donovan and Jalen Brunson kind of play a similar role and do similar things, which means if the defenses collapse on Jalen, who's stopping Donovan? Wait, 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 wait. Who stops Jalen if the defenses collapse on Donovan? Pick your poison. Both of them are gifted, can do whatever they want, whenever they want on the offensive side of the ball. We all know that. Jalen Brunson almost a league leader each and every year in charges. Donovan Mitchell, when he was in college, a great defender, still a great defender in my opinion, and if he was asked to carry less of the offensive side of the load, then I think he would be a more willing and great defender for this Knicks team, especially playing under Tom Thibodeau. Everything checks the boxes. He's a New York kid. He loves orange and blue because he loves the Mets. Everything links him to the Knicks, the only thing we're waiting on right now is the Cleveland Cavaliers to continue to spiral out of control so they bite the bullet and make that move. Put Donovan Mitchell as available and watch what the New York Knicks do. Watch how fast they call and watch how fast Donovan is a Nick. For me, he is the most realistic out of every single 
person that we've talked about thus far, he's the most realistic. Fit-wise, he may not be the best fit, but in terms of what he could bring to this Knicks team and in terms of realism, Donovan Mitchell is number one on that list. And let's not forget, in a league where connections matter, Jalen Brunson stated, Donovan is a good friend of mine for a while. And if you're Donovan Mitchell and you already want to come to New York and you have your friend in Jalen Brunson here, you have your other boy in Emmanuel Quickly here, you have the relationships, the connections, and wearing the colors that you love, what more could you want? A city that not only would embrace you, would love you unconditionally. What else do you want? Donovan Mitchell to New York makes sense. It's box office. It's the most realistic, most explosive backcourt immediately created, giving defenses fits each and every night immediately created. This is the move. This is the move if you're the Knicks. And this is the move that Leon Rose and company needs to watch more than any other move. In my opinion, this season, more than anything else. Because this absolutely could become a realistic move in the next few months. NBA insider Ian Bagley wants the Knicks to add a defensive specialist. If you're familiar with my guy Ian Bagley for SNY, he's an NBA insider with them, and sometimes what he does is he conducts what he calls Ian Bagley's mailbag. And with that, he'll take questions from around the league, oftentimes Knicks fans, and he'll answer their questions with his own opinion. And recently, he gave his opinion on who the Knicks should add that could really give an impact to this team. And he said if the Knicks could add any player right now this season, he'd like them to add OG Ananobi. The question reads, who would be the lowest caliber player the Knicks could theoretically acquire in a trade based around quickly Grimes that would be considered a real improvement and not a lateral move? And this is what Ian Bagley stated to that question. This is a great question. In my opinion, my answer would be, Toronto's OG Ananobi. The current legal dispute between the Knicks and the Raptors would presumably take Ananobi off the table for the Knicks. But according to Bagley, he would be at the top of any list I'd make. Several impactful players will become available as the trade deadline approaches. So maybe there is an option outside of Ananobi when we get to late January. OG Ananobi for me is the best fit for player that would likely be available for the Knicks because he checks all the boxes, fits a position of need, and helps the Knicks run their roster and players the right way. It puts RJ back at the two, gives you size there. And then it puts a real true wing at the three, gives you immediate size there, immediate impact there. He checks all the boxes. I agree with Ian Bagley here. I would add OG Ananobi to this Knicks team in a heartbeat if it was possible. The problem is, I don't think it's possible. Fit works, everything else works. Even the CAA connection is there, so that would work. The only thing that doesn't work is that the two teams involved would have to be the Knicks and the Toronto Raptors. But what about you guys? What do you think about all this? Do you agree with Ian Bagley that OG Ananobi would be the perfect fit? Or do you think while OG is the perfect fit, the most realistic option is Donovan Mitchell? Let me know in the comments below, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button, leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.